So today I'm going to be doing you a setup guide of RPCS3 for Emu Deck for Windows. So in this setup guide I'm going to be showing you how to download the emulator, which directory to put the emulator into, how to install the firmware, which game files we need, and I'm going to go through controller and video settings. So this is an all-in-one guide to get you playing up to 4K PlayStation 3 games with an Emu Deck for Windows, so check this one out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide for MU Deck Windows and RPCS3, make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content on my channel. So we're looking at RPCS3 today, specifically for MU Deck for Windows. So first of all, what we need to do is actually download some firmware and I'll leave the link in my description for this. And this is going to bring you to the PlayStation website. If you just scroll down from the top, you're going to come across update using a computer. If you just click on that and then download PS3 update, this is your firmware. So just left click and you might get something pop up just saying that it can be downloaded securely. In that case, if you're using Edge like I am for this, just left click and keep and keep anyway. So we've got the firmware and what we're going to do next is when you install MU Deck onto your computer or rather Windows, you've got two directories here. So let me show you what I mean. We got a directory which is going to take you where to put your games or in other words ROM files for PlayStation 3. So to get to this we're just going to open up a Windows Explorer and by default when you've installed MU Deck for Windows it's going to go into your C drive and in your C drive you should find a folder called emulation and in emulation this is where all your emu deck games are going to be going so we go into the ROMs folder and if we scroll down this is everything that emu deck for Windows supports so we're going to come across a PS3 folder if we go inside there what we're going to do then is drag our games into this directory just here. So I've got Resistance, which is an awesome game, and I'm going to just drag this into that Emulation ROMs PS3 folder. If we go inside of my Resistance game folder, this is the structure of your PS3 games that you will need. So if you've got a Blu-ray disk drive, you can extract your PS3 discs. So once we've got that in place, there's another directory, so when you've installed MU Deck, if you haven't installed the RPCS3 emulator, if you actually go into MU Deck, we can go into Manage Emulators, and if you don't have RPCS3 installed, like I do, just hit on Install, and that will install. Now, once this is installed, this is going to end up in a separate directory to where your games have just gone. So to get to the directory of where your emulators are installed, and in this case the RPCS3 emulator, we're going to go back to C drive, and right at the bottom you're going to find a users folder. Now the next part is going to be the name of your computer, so in my case the name of my computer is Jamie. If we go inside of here, if we scroll down once we're inside of that folder we're going to find emu deck if you go in there you're going to find emulation station hyphen d go inside this one and the second folder down is emulators if we go in there here's all the emulators that you would download through emu deck for windows so here's rpcs3 So you've got several different folders for RPCS3 at the top here, but if we scroll down, we can actually open up the RPCS3 emulator and get to install things from here. So just a minute ago, we downloaded that firmware. So if we locate that, when you've downloaded your PS3 firmware, you will find you've downloaded a file, ps 3 updatepup I recommend just popping it inside of that emulator's RPCS3 folder just to keep things all together and tidy. So the next thing we're going to be doing is open up the RPCS3 EXE. Click on that one. So we can create a desktop shortcut or create a start menu shortcut, but really 
there's no point if you're going to be using this through any deck. And we also got the option here on the first window to use Dark Theme. I'm going to just leave this one checked. Like I say, we can change it later. Uh, so obsolete check, I have read the quick start guide and do not show again, then press on continue. Okay, so when we first open up RPCS3, we can see that the game is now appeared. At the bottom here, in the little terminal, we're going to find missing firmware. So what we're going to do is install this firmware. So if we go up to file, install firmware, and this will take you into your RPCS3 directory. If we just scroll down, here's our firmware, ps 3 updatpup double left click. Now this bit does take a while, so be patient. So don't show again, okay. So for this part, like I said, be very patient. It does take some time. Okay, so your firmware installation is now installed. So let's actually open up a game through the standalone emulator itself, just to test this is working. So just double left click on your game. And this is another waiting process, but the first time around you load any game with this emulator, it's gonna go through this compiling PPU modules process. The next time you load it up, it's not gonna be like this. And let me remind you that running PlayStation 3 games through emulation such as RPCS3 works on a system called Shaders. So whenever you're playing a game for the first time, it's gonna say at the bottom left hand side, shaders loading or loading shaders and what this is doing is compiling all the graphics and all the data for the game and it's kind of putting everything into a folder but like i say once you've gone through that process you won't need to go through it again once you play the game again so you will find games are laggy initially especially if you've got middle range or sort of potato type computer hardware so just be very mindful of that So what we're going to do next is open up Emulation Station. So we can now see PS3, PlayStation 3, and we've also got our game. So let's just test this, that this is working fine through Emu Deck. So if I just go into the game, launching game, resistance. And profit, we are now inside. Awesome. Okay, and if we go straight into this game through Emu Deck, we don't have a configured controller. So what we're going to need to do is actually exit out of this now. And we're going to go back to the XC. So remember for your emulator, this is going to be likely on your C drive. It's going to be under users, the name of your computer, and you're going to be finding here Emu Deck. It's going to be in emulationstation.d, emulators, and then we're going to find RPCS3. Okay, so let's open up RPCS3. So what we're going to do now is actually configure a controller. So I'm using my favorite Google Stadia Bluetooth controller. So I'm going to go up to pads. And at the top, under handlers, by default, you'll likely find this is set to X input. And if it is, and you can't control your game, we need to change this to another. So I'm gonna select SDL, and now we can see under devices, Google Stadia Controller 1 is now recognized. So we can configure each one of these buttons. So if I press up on the D-pad, and then press up on my Google Stadia Controller, and left here, and left on my Google Stadia Controller, and this is it, it's just a process of mapping out your controller in order to emulate the PlayStation 3 6 axis. So as we know, there's a fair few buttons to configure on the PS3 controller. 
and just make sure you map out everything, including these L3 and R3 buttons, which is obviously pressing down on the left and right analog stick. Okay, dope. So once we finish with that, what we're going to do next is just exit out of here. And whilst we're here, we're going to check out some video settings. So let me just remind you again that if you're planning on using RPCS3 and your computer isn't brilliant or even a potato computer is what you're using, don't expect miracles and don't expect extremely great gameplay. I'm using an uh, Intel Core i7 11th gen processor and I'm also using a RTX GeForce 3050 graphics card as well 16 gig of RAM. Uh, this is a gaming laptop I'm using so the performance is quite good really. So what we're going to do anyways is just click on the game and we can set up video settings per game rather than going up to the top in configuring it to cover every game you've got. So what we're going to do is yeah, right click on your game, create custom configuration and from here we can then mess around with the GPU settings. So default resolution by default is going to be running at 720p. Most PlayStation 3 games were designed for 720p. You did add the exception of a few games running at full 1080p. We're going to leave it there. Now the resolution scale is where we can actually boost this up. Now we can go right up to 800%. So what this is doing is increasing the resolution. So really, I find a good spot to hold this is actually 1080p. If you drag it up, you can reach 4K with this. But like I said, your machine is going to have to have some serious hardware inside of it to do this. But it can be done. Now, if we go to anastrophic filtering, we can go from two times to 16 times. Now, a game like Resistance is flawless, it runs fine. And I'm gonna show you a full compatibility list for RPCS 3 But just for this setup guide, I'm gonna set anastrophic filter to two times. And that's gonna make a slight blur to our games. If we go to anti-aliasing, just make sure that's on auto. And resolution scale, 16 by 16 is the best way to go for this. And under additional settings, also make sure to check VSync. That's going to take away any screen tear. So now we've got these settings applied, we're going to press apply, save custom configuration. And now my controller is set up and we're going to go back into emulation station and open up the game. My controller is now working fine so I can install this game and the installation is actually going into one of those folders where we found the directories just a minute ago. And like I said a minute ago it does do a process called compiling shaders and you just seen that a minute ago. So like I said all this is literally a one time process.
and I'm going to take you over the compatibility list of RPCS3. So if we check out the compatibility list for RPCS3, you're going to find five different categories. We've got playable, in-game, intro, loadable and nothing. So playable is going to be 100% playable. There's going to be barely any glitches, barely any bad things really. So they're going to work fine. Now if we go down to in-game, intro, loadable or nothing, forget it. Those games are going to be barely playable really. So if we go down here, we can see the RPCS3 currently supports just a ridiculous amount of games and that's what makes gaming on rpcs3 so great ps3 hardware is very old nowadays hardware doesn't last forever and this is why emulation is so important plus we get to play some games in 4k as well now what i do recommend you to do is actually update rpcs3 it frequently gets updates pretty much every day so we can actually update rpcs3 from the graphical user interface so from help, you can go to check for updates, and my version is already up to date. Now, tomorrow, it's gonna to be a different story. It will likely say this version is so and so how old, say a day old, and then you can update it from there. Right, literally, as I was editing this video, I just opened up RPCS3 again, and here we go. We got a new version of RPCS3, and this is what it's gonna say. So just press yes to update. And we are now currently inside of the latest version of RPCS3. And whilst I'm here, we can also download game patches to improve our game. So to do this, all we need to do is just right click and highlight your game. And we're gonna find manage game patches. New patches are available. Do you want to update? Yes. Your patch file is now up to date. Now, if we open up this, it's going to show us the region or serial code of our game and just open that down and we can now unlock fps for this game so rather than it running it as stock say 30 fps we can unlock this and we can also extend the field of view within resistance so different games on rpcs3 it's going to have different patches some games don't have any patches at all so if you want to use these patches just make sure they're checked press apply and save. So that's it for today's MU Deck for Windows PS3 and RPCS3 setup guide. So like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like, and also check out my other MU Deck or Steam Deck videos that I've recently uploaded. Follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok, but until next time, stay retro.